extend a, a special welcome to uh, Vice Mayor Alpert today, who I know this is a very busy time. It seems like there's just tons of stuff going on. And, um, uh, Liz and I have talked about using a little bit different format than we used with this DSCA in the past, where we've had people present, so as to speak, in the questions. And it was my suggestion, and I think uh, <coughs> kind of agreed that let me just kind of start off as a little bit of a, con conver a, a combination of a conversation and some questions I, I would have. And then we will then turn it over to the board for additional questions. And as people attending as guests know, our protocol is the board members ask questions first. If there's some time remaining, our member reps uh, would be our first priority for asking questions and not other, not other guests, please. So, um, Vice Mayor, you and I have gotten to know each other fairly well over the last five years. Um, and you know, what a, a geek I am when it comes to data and so forth. And, you know, we, we have a DSCA areas about eight tenths of a square mile. We estimate there are about 12,000 people living in season in the DSCA area, uh, probably going to 15,000 ish in the coming three or five years. It seems to me as closely as I follow this, not a week goes by that there isn't seemingly another new project, you know, 18 units here, 16 units there, a little. Um, as we speak, I just, you know, notice there's six new eating establishments being established or reestablished along Boulevard of the Arts, so this development's coming. Um, and I mentioned the hot weather we've had. It seems like it's gone on for months now. Um, and we continue with these new projects to continue to cut down trees. I think I estimated with Mark Miller's help that we've kind of removed probably 500 trees in the Rosemary District alone. Um, and on the money front, assessed valuations, which I understand are gonna be mailed to property owners on the 18th of August this year, are up about 13%. Um, so, We've got these conflicting things going on. We've got rapid growth, increased uh, revenues, <coughs> if you will, but inflation. Um, so it brings me to you know talk about this budget maybe being a kind of a very interesting one. On one hand, it's kind of an opportunity budget because of the additional revenues, and but seeing the opportunity to invest, anticipating the growth that we've already. Let's start with um, one of the things that comes up next week is attainable housing ZTAs. That comes before the commission next um, Monday. And I understand from our phone call that we've received a <coughs> briefing on that. Can you tell us your views on what, how that's kind of worked out in your opinion, what, what's going to be proposed? Well, I mean, in my opinion, I think it's really a good plan because um, density, you know, we want density in a downtown um, rather than sprawl. So, you know, people are coming here to live. It's a good thing to put this density in the downtown. We're not increasing heights. Um, I think the zoning text amendments, which will allow for some affordable housing is a huge step in the right direction. Um, the, the, you know, kind of that percentage where the staff has, you know, has the uh, amount of affordable housing, I think is a good one because there are actually two projects kind of waiting to, to be, um, proposed if this gets passed, which means two projects with affordable housing. If you uh, increase the percentage, then we won't get projects that allow for affordable housing. And 
defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do. And you know, it may be not as much affordable housing as people would like, but it's better than none. So you know, it's it's the one way to get the private sector to do it. And one thing you and I talked about on the phone, and has been a matter of discussion at DSCA and maybe others, is community workshops. And mm -hmm. the planning board recommended that if a developer is um, uh, availing themselves, taking benefit, so as to speak, an earned benefit, that a community workshop be um, um, held uh, for input. And because of that density increase, and we're putting a heck of a lot more people. And I, and I think that um, we've already met with Lucia and Ryan Chapterlin to kind of talk about putting this in the schedule, so as to speak. So we're hoping that you're supportive they, of that. Yeah, they, they put it in the schedule just, you know, with the caveat that um, if they're meeting the zoning criteria, you can't say you can't do the density. You know, um, there could be some design <coughs> elements, there could be things that um, as you and I talked about some nuanced things about that particular site that um, maybe the surrounding neighbors know about and the new developer coming in. But um, you know, I think it, it needs to be part of the process, but again, with the understanding that you, you, know, you, you can't stop it if they're, they meet the criteria. Sure, we understand. Uh, that it is still administered. Right, right, right. Um, moving on to uh, restaurants, bars, and nightclubs. Those ETAs are working their way through the system. Out, out. And one of the uh, things on the table now is to make sure that there's harmony between any modified sound ordinances and that. So they're they may be slightly separate, but there is some interrelationship. And um, do you know where the sound ordinance I stands? I haven't gotten any information on that. Yeah. I think when we would observe some of the tricky things here are rooftop bars, which are becoming more and more popular. We have had some less than ideal situations. We don't know already with our Right. Um, turning to streetscape. Uh, again, um, quality of life. Um, Fruitville is something that we see is uh, somebody has put a couple hundred thousand dollars in the budget to maybe relook at what was investigated um, uh, three or four years ago. Right. Do you have any more details on that? Um, well, I, I, I don't other than um, from what I understand, and I'm, ho I'm hoping I'm wrong, is that some of the, or at least one of the roundabouts that would have been proposed um, to help the traffic flow, um, we've lost the, the uh, right of way to be able to have enough space to do that. And I, I thought those were key. Now, if they can show us that they can still do it, I'm still a proponent personally, and I don't think that's what staff's going to present, of making it one lane from Orange to 41. I think that's the best traffic flow. Um, it makes for wider sidewalks, makes for a better connectivity between the Rosemary District and downtown, because, I mean, uh, eventually that's it's all going to be one district. And to have a, a you know, a four-lane highway cutting through it just doesn't make sense. And it really, uh, the traffic flows that the engineers had done several years ago showed that more traffic would actually get through than it does now. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's because the traffic, and I can see Roger shaking his head because he understands what the roundabouts do, the traffic keeps flowing. They aren't stopping at a stoplight, creating a parking lot and then they go again and stop at the next stoplight, creating a parking lot. So, it, you know, it's stop and go rather than just this continuous flow. Um, you know, the other issue that 
what's kind of a, a, a red herring issue is the idea, well, it's an evacuation route. So, you know, we're going to cause problems because it's an evacuation route. But during um, the hurricane that preceded the proposal a few years ago, they actually had done traffic counts during evacuation, during a hurricane. And guess what? The traffic was way down. The traffic counts were way down. Getting ready for a hurricane and, and leaving people aren't driving around. So it caught, you know, would have caused no problems um, in terms of an evacuation route. So I still am in favor of doing that so we can have a lot wider sidewalks. Otherwise, you know, I mean, basically we're going to try to carve it out of taking it out of bike lane, you know, the, the narrow bike lane that we have there um, and still is not going to make for really wide sidewalks and a comfortable connectivity. Yeah. And I think we've observed that we have already two approved new condo projects on Fruit Hill with a long parcel for sale. So right. I, I think we might observe, or I personally observe, there was ever a time to rethink this. That's yes. now. However it goes, yeah. it, right. it, it, would, it would be now. And uh, you know that DSCA did, and um, DSA and RDA all supported. Supported yeah, in yeah. one way. Now, yeah. In saying that, I know this is controversial. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, because I was there firsthand. And so, but I, I think, I think we're pleased to see the money in the budget to yeah. at least consider this. And the other part of it was it seemed like we were right on the edge of getting an $8 million grant four years ago to help with it. Um, we, we got the grant and we had to give it back. I mean, it still makes me ill to think about that, that we got the grant to do it, which would have been just transformational and, and had to give it back. So it makes it much harder to get a grant next time. Okay. You know? well, well, speaking of yeah. streetscapes, another project that DSCA has advocated for is the Boulevard and the Arts in town. And we know we didn't get the grant. Where Are you aware where that stands as far as moving that ahead in segments or whatever? Well, I know that, you know, that we did put, and I don't have the budget in front of me, so I can't say how much, but we did put money in there to, to move that along because those are important corridors, you know, especially the, you know, the bay um, getting more and more finished, you know, we slept longer to go there. Yeah. So, and the opportunity for canopy trees. For what? Uh, canopy trees. Yeah. Oh, right. along yeah. And, exactly. and then I know that there also was money for undergrounding and utilities where there's some poles there, the Lean Tower of Pisa mm -hmm. at the moment. Right. So, um, well, what I had hoped to do here was kind of kick off the conversation and the questions. Now let's uh, uh, go around the room to other board members. Dan, what have you got? Oh. Um, the, in the last couple of days, I've had a couple of conversations about the future of downtown. And uh, interestingly enough, I had lunch with Marty Hilton today, who's oh, the yeah, CEO yeah, yeah. of uh, Architecture Sarasota, mm -hmm. and they're putting together a lecture series on perspectives uh, on downtown Sarasota's future. Mm -hmm. David and I had a conversation yesterday about the growth of downtown, the population increase. We know the numbers, but we don't know who is coming and we don't know why they're coming. And I think that's an important thing for us to find out for our future because it's going to affect the character of the downtown. Do you know of any group in Sarasota, including city administration, who's doing a study of who is coming and driving the growth of downtown, as well as the increase in real estate values or costs. I don't, but I wonder if the Realtors Association- I think that's a good start, yeah. yeah might have an idea. So I- I, would, I think it's I an important know. question that you guys need to ask in your discussions about the development of downtown. Who's coming and why? Right. And if we can get a couple projects that 
at increased density, that might, that'll change the character of what's coming. So instead of one 4,000 square foot uh, unit, you have 4,000 square foot. Incidentally, mm -hmm. one of the speakers that they're trying to get to the lecture series is Andreas Tulani. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. If you, if you get him, I would love to come to that. Well, it's transformational in what he did, mm -hmm. what he gave us in the new Great. urbanist code was transformational for them, regardless of what side of the issue you're on. It's changed downtown. Uh, moving on, uh, Bob. Yeah, there was a, a story mm -hmm. uh, a few days ago about the cost of installing the artwork at 10th Street and 14th Street. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, cost of the, I guess the cost of installing is, oh, is more yeah. expensive than the yeah. cost of the artwork right. itself. Yeah. And Personally, I, I think we here at Broadway would like to see artwork at 10th Street in the roundabout. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe it's coming back in front of the commission. Do you have any sense of how you're going to proceed with that? Well, I mean, my my preference is that we come up with the money and we do it because I, you know, that that's been our program to do art in the roundabouts. And I hate to see us back off of that, you know, because of, you know, the, the inflation, the supply chain, yeah, issues, yeah, yeah, that sort the of cost thing. of up across the board for everything. everything. I mean, we're all yeah. struggling, mm -hmm. you know, with our budgets uh, because of insurance and the cost of a new roof, what have you. Yeah. And installing that artwork somewhere else, it's still going to cost some money to install it. Somebody, yeah, you so have to put, let's, let's put, put the, the uh, yeah. Can I ask a put it on something. For, for sure. Number? Uh, we just received today from Kimberly Horn uh, the uh, zoning uh, changes for the Bay Park. Uh, there's going to be a community meeting August 15th. Okay. Uh, but when I, 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 I know the answer, I believe, uh -huh. but, uh, but I know people here are concerned about uh, Centennial Park. Is there any plan, are there any planned structures for Centennial Park uh, that you know of? Where the the, not that I know of. We you know, looking at along the, the canal there yes. where they put in the boats, you know, like for now, like food yeah. truck, but in the next phase there there is, you know, there is planned a restaurant. It, yeah, it's uh, on the south side of Tennessee. Yeah, right. But right. but uh, the no. uh, no, Centennial Park, uh, mm -hmm. which is primarily parking, I think they were gonna extend the, the parking there. But right. I, and I haven't seen, uh, I, I sort of tried pretty closely, any plans for any structures in uh, St. Jennings Park, no. parking garage, or, or anything like that. Unless they, you know, unless but that would people have, have been to... talking about it, haven't, you know, brought right. it forward yet. But yeah, the idea is to make it um, kind of improve and expand a little bit the, uh, you know, the boat launch exactly. area so that voters have a little more. There's always concern that you know, there's yeah. going to be a 16 story right. parking garage, which concerns people here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Unless, um, unless they're planning to do it later, I don't know. Patrick? Uh, yeah, but just to follow up a bit yeah. on the Bay Park uh, mm -hmm. question there. So, as it's being built out, uh, is the commitment to keep the pedestrian walkway around the channel as they start building all the concession errors there. Right now, the current Bayfront Mert, you know, goes right along the Bayfront there. There's not, no structures between the pedestrians and the water other than walks and stuff like that. I mean, Is as far it, as I know, Patrick, but I don't, you know, um, you know, I didn't see anything on the final plans. It may be different, but they, you know, they're, they're doing that perimeter and they're going to, you know, work on the shoreline and that sort of thing. So well, I'm, I'm not that's, sure. That's actually the question is an important issue. I've seen other cities where they've taken the bayfront and they put in dining and entertainment along there mm -hmm. and then they allow them to extend out mm -hmm. to there. Mm -hmm. And then we lose the pedestrian walkway along the bay. And that has been there and it was needed that or dedicated that way. And I'm just asking if you will continue to support keeping the pedestrian pathway close to the bay. Well, uh, I, there's some practice. plans to put um, 
restaurants all along there anyway. You know, that's just the corner, kind of the south south of the, uh, the canal where the boats launch and, you know, just that, you know, making that row kind of a, a, a restaurant row. Given that this we we had the July 4th boat races mm -hmm. and the boats were all parked in the Van Williams of parking lot. Uh, so is that July 4th boat race is going to go away? They're going to go somewhere else than downtown Sarasota? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you know. I guess that'll be up to the boat race people or if we can accommodate them somewhere. Well, I think the commission would want to consider. If you look, they We're take not going to keep the parking lot. No, I know. Okay, so, yeah. okay, so that's, that, that, that I can assure you. Go away then. Thank you. Um, we talked about the need for street trees. Um, back when we had the tree advisory committee, they recommended an urban forest program, which I believe you supported yes. on that. Uh, I understand the communications with the sustainability manager for the city. He's saying that the program that he has, to, he has limited dollars to work with in their phase two. $32,000 was all that was allocated for them, and it's nowhere near to do what's needed to be done. And my question is, is the health and safety of the residents, people who walk on our sidewalks, a high enough priority to warrant maybe more than $32,000 in the budget uh, for programs that will get us more trees versus three trees? Um, I would think so. I didn't realize it was just 32000 Would you bring that up when the yeah. budget yeah. comes before you? Thank you. Uh, Roger. Um, kind of a philosophical question about the economic health of downtown. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that, or at least I think we know, that there are fewer office workers committing in, that uh, at least three restaurants are no longer open for lunch uh, because that uh, traffic is not available uh, at the end. But, uh, and so downtown appears to be emerging or evolving into a restaurant and entertainment district more than anything else with some high rent in retail. So I guess my question is philosophically, is there anything the city should be doing or thinking about, about downtown and its economics? Well, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I, my sense is the downtown is not uh, having problems with its economic health. Um, you know, we still, when you go out on the street, there are lots of people, but mostly it's lower main. Um, I think doing the main street project where we can widen the sidewalks, you know, going further east, I think having that, um, housing complex coming in there where you know the, the Hollywood 20 is next to the Hollywood 20. I think that's going to make a difference. So um, all of these things I think will add to the economic health of downtown and you know more amenities and hopefully more shops, not just restaurants. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good point about the East End involving and needing to redo Main Street. Mm -hmm. Probably is a higher priority than some other. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I, I had heard at one time that you know one of the things we we don't have, particularly at the Hyatt, is going to be demolished. That's our one mm -hmm. convention space, quote unquote convention space, not for a recording center convention space. But I had heard the idea floated at one time of trying to convince the post office to move it and use that as a convention space to talk about an economic mm -hmm. driver and that a convention space appropriate with yeah. size as to support our hotels and economic uh, yeah. have you heard I, I, of land that would be available that would make sense I for have not such. heard that at all and I'm not sure that's enough space for you know a convention space. I mean you look at the one in Tampa, which is really not quite large enough either for because of you know their their constraints on land there. 
for really large conventions. I mean, they certainly have conventions there, but they, you know, and I, I don't think the post office property is yeah, well, quite heard, large enough. In the Virginia Haley talk about it as mine, and I don't know what the right size is by a long shot, but right. that would be one economic driver or a extension of a university, you know, with right. a downtown campus or something like that. But with the county commission building folks moving in a year and a half, that's going to be another sucking sound, so as to speak, on um, right. uh, activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. That and, um, you know, and I don't know how much it'll, but I would think it would benefit downtown. You know, from what I understand, the property that was purchased where Williams Parker law offices are, that whole, that, you know, they've purchased a really large, um, you know, a mass, a, a large group of properties. So it's going to, you know, their their plan is, you know, which, you know, we have, has to go through a long process yet, but it's for, I think, the hotel residences mm -hmm. and retail there. I think they're envisioning like a whole row of shops and things. So all of these things ought to add to the economic of our, of our downtown. Along with the business and the acquisition of the county property. Yeah, exactly. Here, Ken. Uh, David, uh, when I was on the commission, this issue came up also. There were several efforts to create a convention center downtown. The challenge was, and the reason it never went anywhere, was that the business community, the development community, want the city wanted the city to pay for it. And they would get the benefit, the economic benefits. And that didn't work for the city commission. So uh, there, there never has been, as far as I know, uh, a proposal that has dealt with that issue of like, who's going to pay for it? Or, is the taxpayer going to pay for it? The, the developer benefit or what? Okay, we got uh, Peter, anything you got on this way? Uh, uh, member reps, uh, uh, Victor. Yes, Mr. Albert, my name is Victor Mintier, and I represent uh, the Exercise Community uh, Boulevard. Which? Which one? Victor, I represent the Boulevard. Oh, okay. Which is located. Okay, yeah, um, I know where um, I am. Okay, yeah. thank you. I think we've met before in the past. It's yes. a pleasure to meet you again. Um, we would, we recently found out that you're our representative. And, no one. <laughs> well, that's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, you're representative. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was thinking of something you're, else. You are a representative. And by yeah. the way, I had the same problem with uh, uh, David and the mayor when we asked yeah. who our representative no, we were. Yeah. It's a, it's a Boulevard of the Arts right there. It's a funky. Yeah, it's job. like, yeah, you never know, you know, because mostly not everything um, east of 41, if I'm not, you know, so. Well, I'm a three-year immigrant from Mississippi who has now come to make his life uh, the last part of it, I guess, in Sarasota. We like to get to know you. And we've had the opportunity in the past to talk to the mayor, and Jen Ahern, and also to Nick Patel. We've had wonderful conversations. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to come and join us in a conversation about sure. your view of where we would go? Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah just in touch, make that happen. Yeah, just get in touch with me at, at um, do you have my city email address? Mm -hmm. Miss Wallenberg will be the person. Yes, yeah. But we look forward to having you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to go talk with anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I would let me come back to um, you know, one of the most contentious issues I see on the horizon is you know the, uh, the combination of the sound matter, which has been kind of off and on, Mr. Fournier has been working on that, but it's back burned. He was looking for direction, but I just see, we're gonna have to, that's gonna be tricky. And I think, you know, we gotta thread the needle on the um, vibrancy and sustainability thing. And I think that to get that right, and get the restaurants and bars. It was a, there was a question asked on the restaurant and bars uh, that the proposal on the table would, uh, um, bars could be by right, so as to speak. The question was asked, Brian, Brian Chatley, well, does that mean there could be a bar 
every second business? And he said, yes. So the question is, on all of this uh, quality of life thing, whether it be sound or character of a neighborhood or whatever you want to call it, this is where we're going to really need to work together on this because it is going to be tricky as hell and contentious as hell. I think DSCA is kind of committed to try and facilitate that. We've already facilitated kind of one workshop, and we look forward to that. But the good news, I think, I see on the um, the bars, restaurants, that it's going to take a couple. It won't go to the planning board until the third week in September. So there's um, you know some time there before it comes to the commission. But I, I need to ask for your support in trying to find that um, that balanced way of uh, addressing this and uh, finding the right templates. I think I saw some emails today of uh, hopefully on some of this stuff we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There are things we could carry so plagiarize and, um, you know, to keep our city um, a special place, a special space, as some said, not just another space. Uh, Jim. Hi, Liz. You could answer. Liz and I go way back. I think I donated the very first campaign. And we're still friends. Uh, I represent the Jewel uh, this time around. And uh, my big thing, as you probably know, is the sidewalk clearance on Main Street. I have petitioned uh, Mr. Robinson. I have petitioned Nick and just about everybody else about the congestion on Lower Main. And in their wisdom, and you were on the board, led by Hagen, they narrowed the clearance to five feet, five feet from the edge of the building. But there is still no enforcement. There is still a keyboard player there who sticks out, and then further he puts his bucket for tips. And people are tripping on this stuff. And absolutely nobody is doing this. He's never been cited, and he's there every single day and every single night. Is there something that you can do about clearing Lower May, giving us, you know, I wanted seven feet, but we don't even have the five feet. And it has to be from the building edge. He is against the building, so now we're squeezed in a gauntlet between them. It has to be from the building out. That's well, isn't he in the alcove there? But well, so part of him is in the alcove, yeah. but, but it's from the building edge out, and he sticks out about three feet with his piano keyboard. Now, when he was playing in the, in the apron, Cross on the ice cream store because it cuts out into the uh, parking spaces. He's clear of the traffic, but then he keeps moving back and cluttering the traffic. And so the congestion on Lower Main is intolerable, in my opinion. Could you do something about that? Thank you. I will. I will look at it again, Jim. But I, but I do have to tell you, you're the only person in the entire city who ever complains to me about that. You know, it's like if you go out and say, "Oh, that's not making it legitimate." Absolutely, I mean, but who do you complain to? Because nothing ever gets done. Okay, well, you know, nobody else has ever that. mentioned it to me. Okay, okay, okay. So you said it. Okay, Cheryl. First on that issue, I have a friend, uh, disabled friend, who's on the some kind of committee for. Mm -hmm. Disabled. Oh, yeah, the uh, disability. Uh, disability. Yeah, right. And his, uh, uh, he has complained about it because his wheelchair cannot get down lower me. Because it doesn't because fit. It's less than, it's, it doesn't fit through there. Well, he has to be yeah. the only one going. He down has to be time. the only yeah. one no going. And you down. can't have, you can't have two way traffic. Everybody has to see him. Mm -hmm. and, and anyway, so there should be some comment coming from this group. Okay. And I agree with Jim. But what I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. is that, and I probably should know that I'm Cheryl Walker from 100 Central. Okay. I should know this, but you said uh, you weren't going to have any really high rise. <laughs> Buildings, but what is the status of the building across the street from the parking? Garage? The, the uh, obsidian, 
Um, it's still working its way through the process. I don't know where it's going to go. Going to plan. It's you really? know it's it's administratively approved or disapproved, mm -hmm. and then my my um, I guess <laughs> my guess is no matter whether they approve it or they disapprove it, somebody's going to appeal it. And then it'll come before the planning board and the city commission. So there's still a ways to go with it, but what's your personal opinion? Well, my personal opinion is I don't know yet because if they're if they're following the uh, zoning, doesn't matter what my personal opinion is if they're following the rules. I think I would feel better personally if it were housing lots of people. Not 14 families, you know, and I haven't, um, you know, I, I would feel better if it had retail all across the bottom, you know, so, you know, I want to see what the final product is that comes before me before I, I weigh in on, on the whole situation. Thank you. Um, and I think uh, that is about it. We okay. certainly uh, appreciate your time and stopping by. And is there any advice you would have for DSCA how we could do our fulfill our role? <coughs> we, uh, I think you guys do a great job. So you know, there's nothing you know, nothing I can approve. And David's little statistics, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I mean, I know you know, but it is helpful. It is helpful because it gives us a, a better picture of what's going on. So, you know, I think this is a really involved group and, and you know, so I, I do take, you know, your opinion seriously because I know your people who are involved in the community to, to make things happen. Can I ask one, one last question? question? Yes. One last question. This Blue Ribbon Van Wezel mm -hmm. Task Force, um, are they going to have some sort of a group to focus them like the uh, architect selection task force did? Um, they, I know city staff is going to be the liaison, you know, so they'll, they'll have a liaison from city staff. Yeah. And I think we have somebody um, who is, you know, going to be like a facilitator. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we have... A professional. Have, yes. And I, and I know we have... Um, I, you know, I think don't don't hold me that, but that's that's what I recall. And I know we have a professional, also consultant, um, besides the people that are on the committee that know about the venues and how to run them and the numbers and that sort of thing. We also have have put in uh, somebody else as a consultant who has that background as well. So. You know, so I feel pretty good that we've got people on board in Southern County um, who know what they're doing and, you know, that we can rely on their, their judgment. You know, I was like really blown away by the quality of people who applied and the number of people that we have in our community with incredible backgrounds and incredible experience so it was you know it was really wonderful to see because you know when we originally came up with the criteria people were saying you know um you're not going to be able to find people here that are like that and that's why we said well we'll open it up to outside the you know the city and and county and nobody's going to want to come here to do that but fortunately we had all the talent right here so so um so I'm looking forward to see what they do. Thanks. Great. Well, thank you. Again. Thank you all. Okay, thanks for coming.